This is really a great article about Ralph's priest. <laughs> this is really good. Wait till you read till you, you wouldn't believe this. <laughs> Ralph, the guy who does my hair, was... All right, want me to get into it? I really do want to know. Okay. I mean, quite frankly, this is a public service. To hold this information back would be wrong, Howard. I feel like we started this because Ralph's priest... People might have thought we were joking around at first. Yeah. But Ralph, the guy who does my hair and makeup, and he's really, I mean, we call him a homo and stuff, but he's not. At least, he's, well, I don't he think he is. Well, he could be affected by this. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. But he's a heterosexual. <laughs> I mean, he's been with girls and stuff. He left, you know. He left? Yeah. Yeah, but do we really need him? No, it'll probably go a lot smoother. Exactly. I hate when he's in here. So. <clears throat> Are you going to tell everybody how it started? Yeah. Is it in the article? No, I'm going to tell you. Not. I'm going to tell you how it's We don't ever get credit. No. So Ralph was on the air talking about this priest, and I didn't let him give the name on the air, but he kind of described where it was and everything. And he started talking about this priest who, when he was a kid, he went on some camping trip or something, and yeah, Ralph's the, father had left. The priest was a counselor. Yeah. Ralph's father had left his mom, and his mom wanted a father figure. But she figured her son needed to talk to somebody. To a man. Yeah. So the priest said, hey, I'm having a camping trip. You know, he gets to know Ralph. And to make a long story short, the priest says, why don't you let the boy stay over my place? Because we're going fishing early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 and the priest is five minutes from the house. But the mother, of course, being a little naive, naive. said, okay. okay. So Ralph and another little boy go over there. And the, the priest whips out a lot of porno material and junk. And vibrators and sex toys. Right. And shows them to these two little kids. Yeah. And the kid that Ralph was with ends up in bed with the priest, but Ralph swears he was ended up on the floor and didn't do anything with the priest. Well, we did have Ralph hypnotized. Yeah. And Ralph remembered many details, but not getting into bed with the priest. Yeah, but who knows? <laughs> anyway. But even during the time that we were talking about this, yeah. we got phone calls from people who said they remember that priest and had similar incidents. Right. And that's what happened. All of a sudden, guys started calling us and they go, we know who Ralph's talking about because we lived in the same area and the same thing happened to me. Oh, my. All right, so listen to this. The pastor started by reading a statement talking about pedophilia. And then he opened up the floor to questions, statements, fears, sadness. You could see parishioners standing one by one through the stained glass window at the Church of St. Joseph in Mendham. That's in Jersey. The Reverend Kenneth Losh spoke, and then other voices were heard under circumstances where many other churches have been silent. More than an hour later, parishioners walked out the door, and those few who would talk said the meeting had broken new ground for the Roman Catholic Church. They talked of a cathartic experience. See, critics have been accusing the Catholic Church of hiding behind a veil of secrecy whenever a priest has been charged with pedophilia. Catholic officials say they're changing their ways and how the church should respond. So Lash stood at the pulpit Wednesday night and opened the door to what he said is the truth. He told 150 parishioners that their former pastor, James Hanley, Father Hanley... Oh, so Father Hanley's no longer with the church. Father Hanley... Handily. Hand <laughs> Ralph's on the phone? Oh, he had to get in on this. Oh, he's calling from his gym. What? He's calling from his gym. He's in the locker room. Father, handle me. <laughs> See, we never gave the name on the air, but everyone knew who Ralph was talking about. And they all came forward. Let's just get one thing straight, though. My father did not leave my mother. I thought you said he did. No, no he... It took us years to get him out of the house. Oh, he didn't want to leave. That no. was the problem. Yeah. Oh, I see. We were happy to get rid of him. But... Isn't your father Tula? No. <laughs> the, uh, no? No. All right. Anyway, I think this is the way the church wants things done now. You know, out in the open. Evidently, enough people had complained. Because once Ralph went on the air, we had... Lo I think it stirred up a whole bunch of emotions mm -hmm. about this guy, Father Handley. Yeah, like that guy who called in. I think he, he started up on this. Yeah. Yeah. Because he did, probably didn't know until then that it, somebody else knew anything about it. Because if you read that article, they were they were ready to sweep it under the carpet. Of course. Yeah. They're acting like now. They're you know This is 20 yeah, years later. We're great. The National Conference of Catholic Bishops last year established guidelines that call for psychiatric evaluation and treatment for priests 
and acknowledgement of and payment for the victim's therapy. Lash said therapy bills for victims in Mendham have been paid by the Patterson uh, Diocese. I think I could collect. Yeah. Too bad you're not in therapy. <laughs> I He'll should go. be. He'll go. She's saying the church hasn't tried to ignore the problem. But How come these guys are never charged? Yeah. Why wouldn't you bring you know, this guy up? This is a crime, if you ask me. Going and get well, getting counseling and sending them off to some retreat. Yeah, that, that sounds like it's really going to make the party. church. party. You know, that's no deterrent. They, no, they I can't read the rest of the as article. As soon as they found out, they just shipped them off. I can't read the rest of the article because it got so soaked, the article, that oh. uh, I can't I can't open it up now. Wait, maybe I can still read it. it. No more girls in the studio. <laughs> yeah. Your material, please. Let's see. Lawsuit pending. Hanley, who now lives in a Lincoln Park apartment complex where his neighbors said last week that he had not been home for more than a week. <laughs> Newspapers that contained stories about him were piling up on the doorstep. A friend who lives in the same apartment complex said Hanley has been working as a bookkeeper in an office in Fairfield. Meanwhile, Lash was putting the pieces together at his parish. He heard the first accusation again. Hanley, seven or eight years ago, Hanley, seven or eight years ago, and said he immediately notified the Patterson Diocese. He started talking about pedophilia and his homilies to pave the way for the meeting that took place last week. Then another victim stepped forward. Lash knows of four victims. Well, we got Ralph. You don't know about Ralph yet. Yeah. No, no, no. Apparently they do because I was talking to a friend of mine from Mendham last night. Yeah. And somebody at this, one, my friend's mother went to this meeting, and a couple of the people said, well, "What happened to Ralph? Did he did he did he witness some kind of molestation or something? You know, the, my my name was mentioned some somehow. Oh yeah. But not but not in the homily. But some people know. I don't know. Some lawsuit is pending. I think I should be able to get in on that. Civil suit, yeah. You started this Look all. at me, I'm a mess. Well, I'll, I'll testify to that. Yeah. You, you, got, even... you got a lot of people who have witnessed what a mess you are. You can't, even, testify you can't even remember to bring my shorts. <laughs> uh, so Lash is calling all these meetings, you know, to help people through their problems. Would have been a lot better if he could have sort of recognized that... Yeah, if 20 years ago or yeah, however long one of these ago guys. it was that when this guy was running around doing this. Yeah, he, he, jumped, he jumped right on it 10 years later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, last week the process of recovery began for the parish 13 years after Hanley had left and at least seven years after the problem was revealed. Now, is Hanley still a priest? It doesn't even sound like he's a No, priest. he's an accountant now. He's an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> you should go over and have him do your taxes. Oh. Reunion. Uh, let's see, Tom Barra, a SNAP member. What's a SNAP member? Some group, it says there in the article. Uh, who lives in Bayville, said he was abused by a priest at a church in Jersey City about 30 years ago. He repressed the memories until he went to a marriage encounter weekend with his wife in the 80s. What a weekend that would have missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Hey. I like to have tape of that. <laughs> that must have been fun. Uh... Geary said priests treated for pedophilia are not returned to ministries where they would be in contact with children, generally speaking. Generally speaking. But let me ask you something. If you weren't a priest and you took little boys into your home and showed them sex toys and then invited them into bed and possibly had sex with them, would you just go away for a little while or would you go to jail? Well, that's the point. They say the church continues to treat this like a disease that can be treated instead of like a crime. It's a sex crime. Yeah. If against were, children. If you didn't have that collar turned around backwards, you'd be in jail. Well, what's weird about it is the church always comes out with statements about my kind of radio yeah. show being bad for children, but they don't think it would be a good idea to maybe punish some of these guys who and have been again, priests. These are people that, you know, are surrounded by all these people who are supposedly saying the right thing. Yeah, they're all worried about children. They're all so worried about children that they don't even punish these guys. But what I'm saying here is, you know, our kind of radio is supposed to be bad for people. It makes people turn bad. Yeah. Well, these people are hearing nothing but the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> and look at what they're doing. And Mendham Lash said he might have done... Lash is the guy who's now, you know, exposing the all this. guy, yeah. Lash said he might have done things differently with the first victim when the first victim came forward. Knowing what he now knows, he said he would have encouraged the victim to contact the authorities. Yeah, so, so it's quantity, not quality. I guess. There'll be no discussion of whether or not these things happened, but only how they came to light. No victim stepped forward to speak. You got to get over there, Ralph. <laughs> I got to get to church. Yeah. I think you know. I think I have a case. I haven't been to church since. That's Billy, right. are you it's coloring in a coloring book over there? Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Now, Bill, Billy just makes a lot of noise on Mike. He's got an open mic and he's coloring or something. Oh. Give me a break. I don't know, man. That's kind of weird, man. You got to get in on this this class action suit. I think I get some money, man. Yeah. I mean, because something was going on in that room when I was there. And it, oh, it traumatized you. It Clearly. Just, it just, I mean, all the next day I was sick. Uh, I haven't been back to church. Yeah. I'm it, a mess. It turned you off to religion. Yeah, it did. Turned you away from God. Yeah, you what could, could be worse hell than hell because of it. Yeah. What could be worse than a man being turned away from his own religion? That's right. Think back. Weren't you a little bit sore after that? I was. Yeah. You know, now that I'm thinking about it. I really credit Ralph with coming forward about this and actually getting the whole thing started. Ralph was forthcoming, and he was willing to undergo hypnosis to bring this to light. Yeah, I was afraid to mention the father's name on the air because who knew if Ralph even had it right. It could have been, you know, some kind of weird fantasy of Ralph. You never know. But now it's in the newspaper, so we're okay. Father, handle me. Father, handle me. Hey, all your all your fellow uh, boys are coming forward. Yeah, Look but you notice that the oh church my. treats these priests like they're much more important than these children. Yeah. Oh yeah, they treat them better than the kids. Yeah. Yeah, you, you notice that they they had to have like six guys come forward before they do anything. Yeah. Right. Just one guy, no, no problem. Yeah. Well, it might yeah, it might be your word against this. You're going to go down to the church, get in on, get, go rap to Father Lash? Oh, go down there and cry, Ralph, and just scream. I didn't, I didn't know there was a meeting. I would have got up. <laughs> yeah, we could have all gone. We could have taken a camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> he saw you naked, too, right? I, I had to get changed, man. I don't know when he was looking or what, you know? But you were down to, like, your underwear and stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I might have even been naked. I don't remember. I'm probably blocking that out. You should go in there and dress like a woman again and, and uh, say that he wrecked your life. <laughs> I'll bring that tape of the TV show in. Yeah, so you're running around, you're, you're a cheap hooker. Look what happened to this. Yeah, I'm a female and what, prostitute. what am I doing for a living? Hair and makeup and dressing people? Yeah, you could have been a real man. Yeah. You could have had a man's job. Yeah, yeah. I could have been an accountant. <laughs> what is wrong All right, goodbye, that? Ralph. Stupid idiot. I had to bleep him off. What is wrong? I don't know. You see, you got him on the on the phone, and look what happened. He's an idiot. <laughs> He's a stupid idiot. <laughs> Thank God, uh, Father Hanley has been exposed now. But unfortunately, he got to touch a lot of little boys' lives before mm-hmm. his work was uncovered. He didn't touch Ralph enough. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, Ralph goes into Father Hanley's rectory or his house, and uh, for the sleepover party. Right. And Father Hanley showed Ralph some porno flicks, or no, I showed him some magazines, well, magazines, vibrators, sex toys. Well, Ralph couldn't really describe the toys. Could yeah. He? No. There might have been some Benoit eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and evidently, they, they stared at some magazines and stuff, and then they were told to get undressed and, you know, into their jammies, which Ralph did, of course. Because he's obedient. He's obedient when it comes to that. <laughs> and him and the other little boy, uh, I don't know, the little boy, when Ralph came out of the bathroom, the little boy and, fa- and the father were in bed together. Yeah, Ralph said it appeared to him that this other little boy was used to the drill. Yeah. He seemed to know what was happening. Well, it sounded like the other kid took the bait a little better. Right? Yeah, and Ralph decided to sleep on the floor, allegedly. Yeah, and he doesn't know, you know, he said... He doesn't know what happened in that bed. <laughs> he said there was a lot of hijinks, though. <laughs> <laughs> nothing funnier than an old priest and a young boy in bed together. Oh, There's God. nothing funny. There's nothing funny about that, Howard. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> it's just so wrong. It's just nothing funnier. That's not abusing the situation. No. <laughs> Taking advantage of everything. Really? God on your side. Yeah, God. Jesus would want it this way. Oh, come on. You know, there are guys who, you know, they, they really get into the, the the evilness of it, and they actually go up on the altar and do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, i got to take a break. Come on, and then we got to do the rest of the news. All right. Screw Ralph. <laughs> well, the father tried. Ah. Yeah. We'll be back right after this.